Wild Audio is a guitar brand that started in January of 2015 and has been a strange, confusing journey to follow ever since. I want to preface this that I love Zach Wild as a guitar player, and he seems like a genuinely great guy. This isn't a criticism of the guitars made by Wild Audio, to say, more so just an overview of the history of the brand and why it's frustrating as a fan to support. Full disclosure, I do own two Wild Audio guitars, the Odin Grail Genesis Bullseye and the Warhammer Vertigo, and I love them quite dearly. I do have two videos on my channel of a kind of an overview of my thoughts on them, so I recommend checking those out if you want to take a look at them. So I do have some bias, but I'll try to be as impartial as possible. Now back in January 2015 at NAMM, Zach Weld showed off the prototypes of three models of guitars and two different amps after announcing he was leaving Gibson and Marshall. He showed off a 100 watt head and 4 by 12 cabinets and a smaller possibly 10 watt mini head with two smaller speaker cabinets similar to his Marshall mini stack. This all debuted in a private room off the main floor of NAMM. And even at the very start of this, Wild Audio had an odd beginning. You could figure someone like Zach Wild can get a small booth at NAMM, and the reception to the prototypes were less than impressed from what memory serves. But in December of 2015, Schechter announced they would be handling production and distribution of Wild Audio from their South Korean factory. With this news, it was announced Guitar Center had exclusive seller's rights to Wild Audio guitars. Zach has said it's called Wild Audio because he intends to sell more than just guitars, such as strings, amps, speakers, the whole nine yards. The first models went available for sale in 2016. They were the Odin Deathclaw Molasses in Blackout Bullseye, Viking V in Deathclaw Molasses in Pinstripe with or without a Floyd Rose, and the Warhammer in Deathclaw Molasses and Gangrene Pelham Vertigo, again with or without Floyd Rose. Again, this first run of guitars were met with not stellar reviews. Most people said they were overpriced and underdelivered for what they are. The biggest source of confusion for me personally, biggest source of confusion for me was that the Odin original was a slab top, while Zach Wilde is known for his archtop Les Paul Customs that he played forever. The first year of Wild Audio was rough, but that's understandable for a brand new business. But even since then, the Wild Audio brand has been a chore to keep up with. Every year since 2016, new models and new paint jobs have been announced via Instagram and Facebook posts, or by checking the Wild Audio website, which doesn't exist anymore. And then the exclusivity to Guitar Center ended, and now multiple online retailers sell Wild Audio, but different retailers sell different models. Do you want a Sabertooth Tiger Barbarian? Well, it's only at Pitbull Audio. Then certain models are only limited time offers and tour exclusive VIP options, where you can get a stage play guitar by Zach Wild, which is great, but it does cost $2,000, and for everyone else, it pretty much doesn't exist. Worse than that, the orange bus saw Odin Grail was only available on Halloween and the day after, for no discernible reason, really. The biggest problem with Wild Audio to me is the availability of models. Other brands like Gibson or Fender have a standard line of models, and you can pretty much get anything year-round. If you wanted a Fender Strat in white with a maple fretboard with uh, three single coil pickups, well, you can pretty much get that every day of the year, next year, and for the last 50 years. It's not a problem. But with Wild Audio, the vast majority of guitar options are simply gone unless you look at the used market. The Warhammer I own is nowhere to be found. If you didn't buy it in 2016 or 17, best of luck finding one. Right now, if you want to buy a new Wild Audio guitar, your options, as of right now, are a Raw Top Bullseye Odin, Silver and Genesis Bullseye Odin, Psychic Bullseye Raw Top Barbarian with right and lefty, Blood Eagle in black, Nordic Frost Blood Eagle, righty or lefty, and a Raw Top Blood Eagle. And the new model, the Nomad, in Coco Bolo and Quilted Vortex. No Viking Vs, no Warhammer, not to mention on Zach's Instagram. He has shown off built guitars that look cool and something I would buy but have no, not been available for purchase. There has also been a double neck barbarian called the Behemoth shown off on Instagram and played on stage. And recently a new model called the Heathen and new model of Odin called the Blizzard. On screen are the various models Wild Audio has had over the years. There is both available for purchase and not. These are all models I wish were still available for purchase but sadly not. This is why Wild Audio is confusing and you never know when new models are available for purchase or for how long they'll be available and why they may seriously go away. If Schechter or Zach Wild came out and said the brand is about releasing limited time models for each year, 
at least I can temper my expectations, but as it stands, you never know what Wild Audio is up to, which leaves the very little faith in the brand. I do plan on buying a Nomad soon, but it's hard to recommend a Wild Audio guitar to people. I really wanted the Gold Cyclone Barbarian. It's gone. I really wanted both Buzzsaw Odins. Gone. I love Zack and the guitars he makes, but I have to say Wild Audio is a very poorly run business. To add to the confusion, Zack has been touring and recording with Wild Audio amps and pedals with Black Label Society and Ozzy live, saying eventually these will be for sale, but never stated an estimated release date. Wild Audio even sold strings and guitar picks for a short time, which I've bought, but again are no longer for sale for whatever reason. Meanwhile, Solar Guitars, started by Old England, pretty close to when Wild Audio debuted, has been a huge success, and they regularly reveal new models, have very good communication with the community. Ola runs his Sunday with Ola, where he shows off new models. His wife takes professional B-roll and website pictures for the new models. It's a great run business. Good job, Ola and crew. I don't want this whole video to be all dumping on Wild Audio. These are all just thoughts I've had following the brand since its debut. These are just criticisms out of love and respect. I only want the brand to be better, and if I were in charge of marketing, this is what I would do. Firstly, have a mission statement released by Zach Wild and Schechter, and clearly define what they want to accomplish as a company. Just something simple like Zach here and Wild Audio was about releasing limited run guitars that will run one year apiece or yada yada yada. Just something to clearly define to consumers what this company is all about. Second is to start a YouTube channel and make professional demonstrations of new models and models on sale. Currently, new models are unveiled via Zach's Instagram, where he plays along to a song and plays a solo from it, or just having the new guitar on his kitchen countertop with a vinyl playing a BLS or his Book of Shadows albums. This is cool and all, but, but in terms of marketing, it's a terrible way of getting the word out. And the audio is just recorded from Zach's phone, so the quality is pretty bad. So start a YouTube channel, make professional sound demos, run down the specs of the guitars with good B-roll of the guitar, I know Zach owns a recording studio on the Black Vatican, so it can't be that much work. That way, people have a much easier way to share info about new wild audio guitars and have reliable info on the guitars. Any of these videos add links to retailers who sell them so people know where to buy them. From a more personal and subjective point of view, I'm not a fan of the raw top looks on these guitars and prefer a simple just two-color paint job like the Bullseye or Cyclone. Zach is known for the Bullseye, and I'm not so sure why he's been so hesitant to use it and some other things like the buzzsaw and cyclone stuff. These are all just thoughts I wanted to get out there because they've been in my head for literally years, and I really do love the wild audio guitars I have. And hey, Zach, if you are listening, I'm open for work if you want to hire me. Just know uh, I don't come cheap, but I will work hard. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I don't plan on making many more videos, so don't feel like you have to subscribe or anything uh please support your local musicians and local music stores